Egberto, <laughs> welcome. Hey, welcome. Egberto. Hi. Hi, David, Tamara, Hi. how are you? How's everybody doing? Hey, Egberto. Hey. You made a comment on a politics done right this week about eating their own. And I wanted you to bring that into this conversation with David. I think it's an important concept. And, and you know, David uh, alludes to it a lot, including uh, uh, what he has to say. There's something that he said that rings very true. When he said that, uh, and, and actually I heard you say it as well, Tamara, and that is, it is in the best interest. Reparations are also in the best interest of white people. And um, so right. I mean, they, they don't quite get it. But to the term that you want me to go ahead and talk about is, and I, and I hope I have the one that you want me to talk about. You talked about it Wednesday, and you, you gave this great example about white people now are starting to eat their own. OK, exactly. I know which one you're talking about. When we had slavery, right? Black people were slaves and they they could look and say, well, they are black and it doesn't matter what condition white people were in. They could look at black folks as slaves. But then they kept moving on. Right. Uh, we had the Indians first that got slaughtered, then the black people that got into slaves. Then we had the Chinese that were abused to build the Pacific Railroad. And so this plutocracy, this cap capital system had a way of eating all these people. But guess what? They ran out of people. <laughs> mm -hmm. They ran out of people. So, David, your white skin doesn't mean anything anymore. It means nothing anymore because it was never about your white skin. It was about using your white skin against uh, to make you believe you had something you never had. And in that way, you would fight to the death against black freedom, against Indi uh, uh, native freedom, against Chinese freedom because you had that white skin. And as long as you had that as a dividing factor was great. But then capitalism ran out of people to abuse. They ran out of people to eat. <laughs> so now they have to start eating its own. The reason I support other other avenues as well, like uh, coalition building, etc., is because I think the biggest bang is going to be realized not when I somehow changed somebody morally because this country was not formed morally. You know, people always say, oh, one of the reasons I was never a king fanatic was we were hoping to look onto people's moral being. And I don't think there's a moral being in people. This country wasn't formed on some sort of morality. You don't have a country that have slavery, kill the Indians and abuse the Chinese and say, oh, we were a moral country. So how can you appeal to something that was never there? I want to appeal to people's way of living now and say, hey, you hang with me. We can make life better for all of us. Robbie just joined us. Good morning, Robbie. Hey, Robbie. Good morning, Robbie. Buenas. Hi, everybody. Buenas tardes. ¿Cómo estás, hermana? Todo bien. No puedo quejarme nada. Escuchando todo. Everything okay. good. Listening to y'all. I do. I hear what Egberto is saying. And oftentimes, in my opinion, you know, which we all we always think about things in a in a in a duality right right wrong either or you know we don't live in the grays and i oftentimes life is not like that and it gets complicated with intersectionality um you know and, and i'm so grateful to new folks like uh you know all the rashida alexandria all, all these new ladies that are coming in yes. not from an elite status and i think that lower income experience right and their the diversity of them of who they are is really allowing for true reform, you know, at least pushing back on it. Um, but what 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 concerns me is when we say that whiteness means nothing, right? Today, because I don't know, like maybe that's a black and white way of looking at it, like a duality, because it 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 does. I'll give you an example, and and I'm a preface. This is gonna sound funny. I like white people. I have white friends. You know, <laughs> okay, David, we like you. We love you, David. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes people think I'm white, you know, which, which that brings in another thing. We'll get to that later. I, I took out some clients who um, looked at houses that were very expensive. And I had showed this same home to uh, women of color, right? And who could also afford to buy this home. But the interesting part, and, and they both ironically were relying on family members. But the interesting part was the couple who was dear, right, said, um, you know what, I'm going to call my mom for help. And that goes to show this generational wealth. And 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 here's the thing: when they talked about it in the hearings, and they referenced, you know, that people, the, the labor, the value of labor, which David always talks about, and you know, building this country for for free, basically, and not getting 
the, um, the, the value in exchange, right? And then on top of it, the trauma. I, I think a lot of times when you hear me uh, talk, uh, specifically Robbie, you may think that uh, I am saying, uh, when I say things like white doesn't, the, the white skin doesn't mean anything anymore. I'm not talking in a historical uh, nature at all. What, I want, what I'm trying to say is white skin is no longer going to be your savior when it comes to what capitalism has to do to you now. Okay, in, in, in other words, there's no more of us to eat, and there are enough of us also who have bought the Kool-Aid, a la Oprah Winfrey, uh, Smith, all these uh, billionaires that are now black, they are black in skin, but mm -hmm. they are of the master's uh, econ economic system, which hurts their own. So we have a Smith who gives a whole lot of money to uh, this university, this black university, and mm -hmm. everybody says, hoorah, rah. but mm -hmm. in the process of giving $40 million to that university, his industry is going ahead and killing the work that you do, Robin, in a black community that's, that's uh, gentrified. He's making a profit into kicking his own people out. So I those, are, those are the dynamics that I'm talking about. Is he a black man skin-wise? Yes, but it's more than just skin now because he, along with other people, are trashing poor white people as well. I'm glad that we get into the beneath the surface structures because that's really where the solutions are. That is why we are necessary. I, um, I was just going to say that we also have to take into consideration uh, one of the things that's going on is resistance. There is a consolidation of resistance to white supremacy that has been building. Um, and this generation, you know, the, the, the struggle has been intensifying, uh, which means there is less room for uh, the ruling elites to provide the kind of social status, uh, you know, for working class whites than they had. So there's lots of cannibalism in capitalism, ultimate ca cannibalism of the capitalists, you know, taking the labor of, of working people and turning it into profit and concentrating wealth and power in their hands. The system of social control is renting the white section of the working class, literally renting them, you know, uh, to, uh, to act as, uh, as cops. Uh, on everybody else and giving them little badges, you know, I mean, that's what white this is. It's this little badge, right? It doesn't feed your kids. That's how Martin Luther King described it. You know, Jim Crow, that scrawny bird does not feed your kids. And yet the white working people fall for it because a whole system reinforces that set of illusions uh, that these that these little perks of, of racial privilege that give you this actual real material advantages over people of color, uh, particularly black people, uh, but uh, but don't really feed your kids. There's a uh, tension that we have to hold in our minds. You know that is you know the this idea that their privileges are real, but they're not benefits. They're real. Uh, but only if you look at it from the point of view that I'm not black, I'm white, you know, which is what that what that means. And that tension really runs throughout American history. It's not simple hypocrisy to talk about this country in the way that people do, you know, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and all of this other stuff. I mean, the, the guy who wrote the Declaration of Independence, you know, was a slaveholder. When we talk about the morality of it, that is the reason why I don't believe in policy that depends on the morality of white people or black people or anything. Because yeah. I, you know, I, I want to I want to do something here because I, I like to be honest in the things that I say. And uh, <clears throat> even, and let's say the black community, right? You know, and, and even the Latino community as well. There are gra gradations of colors, right? And you have within these gradation of colors some having a feeling that they are better than others, right? That is the same sentiment among white people. I don't want to make this a white supremacy only issue. Mm -hmm. Because the mere fact that this issue occurs within communities of color themselves mean more than anything else, it's also a human issue. <laughs>